Hey, what's up, Myth Guardians? Cool Cat here with another Myth Guard deck, and today we're going to be looking at a uh, classic kind of archetype. It's Purple and Green uh, Reanimator. Uh, this deck's been around for a while, and it actually hasn't been touched at all by the recent balance changes, so I think it's still in a really good spot to help you uh, climb the ladder. Um, I'm doing very well with it in high gold, um, so I think it's uh, in a really, really great spot. I know a lot of people have been using this deck to climb uh, through the Mithril ladder. I'm not quite there yet myself but I plan to be pretty soon with this deck specifically I have a uh, nine and two record with it right now as at the time of recording this video um, so I think it's just a really really strong deck um, but we'll go ahead and hop into the list go over some games and a short conclusion at the end <laughs> And make sure you give this video a like if you like this deck list, um, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more MythGuard content. Alright, so hopping into the list, we'll go ahead and uh, look at the path and the power. It's a pretty uh, pretty strong combination. It's pretty much the, the engine for the early game of this deck. It's going to be Disc of Circadia, um, which is a super underused path. I think this path is very unexplored. It has a lot of uh, power in it, even outside of... Um, reanimator decks um, but basically whenever you use your power uh, it flips between two abilities day and night so when you're in night um, you draw you divination two and draw that card when you enter night and then um, all of the minions at the end of each turn that didn't attack heal for one so you know that means um, when you switch to night you divination two, pick which card out of the top two of your deck that you draw and then the uh, passive the passive to this path um, when you're at night when you don't attack with the minion it heals for one at the end of the turn and then when you flip it over today by using your power uh, you discard a card and then every minion has slayer one which is every single minion yours and your opponents which does come in handy when it comes to killing off your hopeless necro or trading up on your born again racer and shadows and early drops um, and then the pursuit when you go second your power costs zero mana to activate the first time which basically lets you flip it today turn one uh, you start on night so your first power use is going to flip it over today uh, which is really helpful to make sure that you do get a big drop in your uh, boneyard to start the game off and for the power we're going to be running smite uh, you really want to have a power that doesn't interact with the board to make sure that you're able to use your power when you need to um, i did try this uh, deck with a couple of other options like the um, the divination power with impel even and I think smite's just the best one to use it's a really uh, I would consider this a slower aggro deck um, because you really just win the game outright by turn six or so if your game plan goes smoothly and getting that extra chip damage in with smite is very very key to letting that happen um, and then going through the list, it's a very condensed list. So we'll go ahead and do the packages here. We have our um, our reanimator package, which is going to be the Hopeless Necromantic. It's the key card to this deck. Dropping this on curve and letting it actually get that demise effect off is going to be very key to winning your early game. But what it does is it replaces itself with the bottom minion of your boneyard. So you're going to use your smite to discard a big drop early on um, so that that big drop is on the bottom of your boneyard. So when your hopeless necromantic dies, it'll be replaced by that bigger drop. Um, and then we have our, uh, our the rest of our package here. We are running four of the Volkov Heavy. Um, this is a good one to get out of the hopeless necro. And it's just a really good turn five drop as well. We have our short stag, um, which is very strong. Um, the 8 8 overrun, and it can only take three damage in combat, which is extremely great. Um, to make sure that you can actually swing with this thing once you get it out of your hopeless necro and the awaken effect does still go off even if you don't play it from hand so if you do get it from your hopeless necro you can still return a minion from your boneyard to your hand 
and then we have uh, two of the Indrick Beast. It's just a really big, beefy minion um, with warded and overrun, so they're going to have to kill it with combat damage, uh, which is going to be hard to do on turn four with that seven health. And that nine attack is really strong with the overrun. Um, we have two of the Terragon. You do still get this Adamant Pearl in your hand if you get it off of the Hopeless Necro. Uh, so that's a very strong thing to give pretty much any minion overrun, especially with the Slayer 1 from the day side of the disc. Uh, and then my favorite to get back off of the Hopeless Necro is the Lantern Colossus. A 5-7, um, you would think that it's not as good as the Endric Beast, but this Immolation Cloak on turn 4 can really clear out their side of the board and make it really hard for them to do anything up to uh, clear this minion off. And then we also do have our Jinsuk Dollmaster. It's not necessarily a hopeless necro target. Um, it's more just an on-curve drop to make sure that you can keep control of the board once you get your big guys out and swinging. And then we have our early game control um, for when you don't get your hopeless necro combo. Uh, we have two of the born agains. Um, it's just really strong to control the board early. It's also a really good discard target for the disc of Circadia if you want to switch it to day side because it'll just come right back to your hand uh, we are running two of the detained deported combo um I'm not running four because it's not as strong in this deck as it is in other green decks you know but it's still definitely good enough to run two and then I am running um, four racers in shadows this card is insane with the day side of the disc uh, three one rush it's going to take down a lot of stuff for you to keep their board clear. Um, I'm running three of the Samuzin. This is kind of a flex slot. You can sub in the Cola box um, as well would be a good replacement for this. But I do prefer the Samuzin myself because of the healing potion. It gives you something to keep your big drops healthy. It gives you something to discard with the disc. So it's just a very flexible card. And a 1-mana 2-2 two, two is pretty good at keeping that board controlled in the early game. Uh, we are running four of the Sword Saints. You put the Biting Blade on one of your big guys that pops out of the Necro. And that's going to pretty much ensure that you do keep control of your life total and you don't get rushed down against aggro decks. Um, I'm running two of the Hotel Barkeep. This is a really good uh, control board control based uh, minion. It has four health, which is really hard to take down in the early game. So you can really use it to control your board and make sure that they can't do anything to, you know, do any damage to your face. And then the uh, powerful ramen that you get out of the Hotel Barkeep is going to be very helpful to flip your uh, hero power up so that you can flip your disc even more. Um, draw more cards on the night side. Uh, get that slayer bonus when you really need it on the day side. And then two of the spirit away. This just is some board control. It'll help you set up for some lethals by getting rid of a minion on the other side of one of your big guys. Um, it's just a really, really strong card. Um, not only are you shuffling the enemy minion back into the deck but you're also turning it into a dead draw so you're going to be if they do end up drawing that card you're going to be denying them that minion which is super strong um, and then i am running three of the raid the tombs it's really good card draw and you can use the boneyard manipulation to make even a later game hopeless necromantic that much more effective uh, but that is a pretty pretty uh, good rundown on the list here so we will hop into some games and see how it goes all right so this game we are going up against nomadic um, it looks like nomadic is running a uh, purple and orange control based deck even using the uh, journey of souls to keep that hand supply up um, but we are going to go ahead and burn our raid the tombs we don't really need any of those uh, too early that's more of a later game tool that we'll use um, but we will flip our disc and discard our indrict beast we have the big drop and the necro in hand so we have a pretty good start uh, they drop their sword saint right in the middle there so we're going to go ahead and drop our hopeless necro right in the middle to contest we'll burn that spirit away another one of our later game tools that we're not really going to need too much of uh, in the early game 
and they're going to use their entire second turn to run that uh, that sword saint away from my hopeless necro. So I'm going to do what I can do to chase it down. Then I'm also going to drop my own sword saint over to the side so that I can put that biting blade on this Indric beast when it pops out from the sword saint. <coughs> But they do have the Seal of Exile, which hurts a lot in this deck, sealing away our Hopeless Necro. Um, you know, but it gets a little bit better with that top deck of the Volkov Heavy. So we have a really good curve right now. We have our 5, we have our 6, 7, and our short stack can bring back that Indric Beast for our 8 drop. So we're looking pretty good. They do have the Scion of Pride. Now uh, with that Pride of Place spell is looking pretty scary, um, but we will do what we can against it. So the best option that we have, I think, is to just put m as many options as possible for them to use that spell so that it's less effective, so that they have to take down a couple of our guys as, as opposed to just using that spell on one of them. But they do have the parry, so they're going to refill their hand really quick, throw that biting blade down onto their scion, which is going to heal them back up, which is kind of scary, um, but it's not too bad. We're going to go ahead and throw our own biting blade onto our lantern colossus and swing our guy's face, flip our disc, draw our born again. With our born again, we're going to throw that down with the immolation cloak to kill off their scion. So if they can't heal anymore, um, you know, they can't... Uh, use their overrun effect on there uh, they play to heaven and back with the racer and shadow this is a really fun combination because the racer pops back into their hand and it costs zero so that they can use that essentially to deal five damage which was very strong for them um, we have plenty of damage in our own hand we're going to drop our short stack all the way to the right so that they can't block the whole board they have to play quite a few minions to get the whole board covered um, which it looks like it doesn't even matter they have the armageddon angel so they drop that down they drop their free sword saint that died on to heaven and back so it costs zero mana but with the traitorous murmur we're just gonna go ahead and steal their angel it's not too big of a deal and if they throw anything down to block we do have detained and deported um and it looks like they do play the pride of place which is perfectly fine uh, but instead of using their last bit of mana to play the biting blade on the sword saint to save their life uh, they play the ghost in the system so that'll just let me spirit away detain deported whatever i need to do uh, to get that last bit of damage in and that'll seal away that game and in this match we are a bay cub um, they are running an artifacts deck, a red yellow stretcher deck it looks like. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and drop our one drop on one. We're going right. to try to control this board early. We don't have our hopeless necro so we're not really looking to discard anything quite yet. Uh, but we do have that healing potion to discard because they pretty much nullify our necro plan. Which is perfectly fine. It doesn't look like we will need it. I'm going to burn that Indric beast because we don't really... Um, have the hand space to be able to play it and I would much rather burn that than so anything else in my hand um, and then I'm going to use my power to burn that potion so that I can use it uh, again to draw a card he plays this card was recently buffed the venom fang mutant um, it looks a lot better than it was before you know, I'm not, I don't know if it's exactly 100% playable yet, but it does seem a lot stronger in some yellow control decks. Uh, this card, on the other hand, Mesa Libre, was recently nerfed. They used to have four attack, um, which it can now trade evenly with my um, Hotel Barkeep. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Samuzin flip that over to day so we can get that even trade and then i'm just going to start burning so i can play these volkov heavies we have three of them in our hand and it's really tough for pretty much anyone to deal with three of those back to back to back like that uh, so we're hoping to really run away with the game on that i'm going to pop my samuzin over with the alama ring he was able to um keep his um his meso libre alive with the plus one health from that so we're going to go ahead and sacrifice our Samuzin into it so that we can get rid of it. 
And I am gonna go ahead and just run my Volkov Heavy into this 2.5 right here. I know that it's going to give it blight, um, but we're gonna have to get rid of it eventually, and I'd rather do it sooner rather than later since we do have a decent target for it. Um, I'm gonna play my own Volkov Heavy over here to contest this um, this Forgeling, and they go ahead and drop their Stretcher, and then they do Vicious Cycle me, which is uh, painful. If any of you have watched my Stretcher video, uh, that's not a fun spot to be in, because it's not the best to draw cards against this deck. Um, you know, but you do still have to draw cards to win the game, so you know sometimes we'll have to take that hit. And we're really looking for our Sword Saint to kind of negate this uh, stretcher damage that keeps piling on to us, which we finally find it here, so we are good to go. I'm going to drop my Barkeep here so that I can pop my power again to flip that over to the day side. Um, I just really wanted that card draw, and with it flipping today, I'll be able to play this Racer to clear off one of these uh, Forgelings. I go ahead and discard my Hopeless Necro. It's not gonna be too useful to me, um, but with that, it'll get rid of the Barb Bolts so that I can keep uh, pushing some damage with this Volkov Heavy. But since I do have this Sword Saint, I can finally start healing up a little bit and getting out of the danger zone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the Raid of the Tomb since I do have the Sword Saint. I'm pretty safe to take a little bit of damage so I can refill my hand. And I get another Sword Saint uh, out of that, so that's pretty great there. So I'm going to play the Biting Blade down. I'm going to burn this Hopeless Necro so I can flip my power so that I don't die to this Forgeling. And I pick up the Lantern Colossus, which is one of my favorite uh, Biting Blade targets. And with the other Sword Saint to my hand, I am feeling pretty good about the spot I'm in. He doesn't have any cards in his hand. Well, he has one Forgeling, but that's not really going to do too much for him. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and burn this Sword Saint. Since I am so far ahead, I don't think that I will need that extra healing. I'm going to flip that over to Day's side, attack with a Sword Saint first, so I get a little bit of face damage in with our Volkov Heavy. I'm going to play my Lantern Colossus right over here and pass the turn. And they do have the Extract Life to kill off that Lantern Colossus, which did hurt quite a bit. Um, but it could be worse. We'll go ahead and draw our Jin Sook, and we'll uh, nullify this Forgeling right here, kill it off. It's not too much healing done with that Forgeling, so it was a safe time to get that taken care of. Uh, with the Hopeless Necro and the Lurker on my... Um, Jin Sook. It's a really safe protection strategy so that I can make sure that it doesn't die. I'm going to go ahead and give that uh, the, the Immolation Cloak so that it can just slowly burn down this 6-6. Six, six. And then I'm going to get the Slayer bonus so that I can trade it off as soon as, uh, as, soon as required. And they do play the uh, the Snake Den, which is a very interesting uh, placement for it. Usually don't want to play that uh, over in those sides, but I'm not really going to say much about that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and negate that snake. It's going to trade off even with our Samuzin, and it'll even die to our Immolation Cloak. And that Hopeless Necro was able to get us out uh, the 5-5 five, five Volkov Heavy, but they do have the Giganto Machina to clear that off. But we top deck the perfect answer to that in our Lantern Colossus. We throw that down, we draw another Lantern Colossus. Uh, so we are looking good. This was another card that was buffed, the Dissonant Drone. Um, it looks to be a really strong control tool. Enemy minions have minus one attack during the opponent's turn, so that'll uh, pretty much negate a lot of uh, your own minions and make them a little less strong. So they trade the snake off and then they play the the uh, the maze. So they're trying to block as much damage as possible. But with the traitorous murmur, I'm able to steal that and then just turn down all of their attack and make sure that they're not really able to get too much uh, to take care of my guys. Really save two of that, both of those minions' life. 
But with the detained and the deported, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this snake and swing that nine damage face for the uh, final push of the damage, four life to four life. That was a really close stretcher game, uh, but we were able to uh, pull it out in the end. And that is the deck right there. Um, it's a very, very strong list. Um, you know, even when you're not able to get your combo off, it's still still able to close out games. There's a couple of upgrades you could make to this deck um, that I just don't have myself. If you have like a perfect grade, that would be an amazing addition to this list. Um, if you have an Iku Terso, that would also be an amazing addition to this list. You could consider adding like a Baba Yaga's Den for some more early game control. Um, but by the time you're able to drop that down it's usually a good time to drop those Volkov heavies into your amazing late game curve like you had seen um, but pretty much uh, easy to play hard to master kind of deck there's a lot of small decisions to make with flipping your disc um, you know so really keep that in mind when you're using your power even just using your power to get those last bits of damage is going to be really key in some games uh, so you may have to discard some cards you really don't want to you may have to um, play some cards so that you don't discard any cards if you play the last card in your hand and flip your disc you're not going to have any to discard and that's one thing to keep in mind you know out of the many when it comes to playing with disc of circadia always remember that the opponents of minions also have slayer it's a very key way to off your hopeless necro so don't flip your disc if you're hoping to get it killed off from a two attack minion and you're already on the day side um, but pretty much that's going to be it for me um, like the video if you like the deck uh, make sure you subscribe for more myth guard content leave a comment down below with any suggestions let me know how you do with it um, but yeah remember to always gg for matt